I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the Department Drawing and Painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, I am going to speak on the history of Japanese art. Module 33, Itinerant, Provincial and Rural Artist. Since early times, pilgrims to sacred mountains, shrines and temples or other sports associated with charismatic holy men had figured prominently in Japanese religious life. Itinerant monks generally left their carved statuary unsigned. Prince Shotoku is considered the father of Japanese Buddhism. Inaku's statues include deities from traditional Japanese Buddhist canon, popular folk figures and deities from Shinto tradition. Inka's biography was included in the Kyoto publication. Hakun Hakaku painted traditional Zen themes. Okada, Be Sanjin's scholarly interests are reflected in his treatise on painting. Pilgrimages to sacred mountains, shrines and temples or other spots associated with charismatic holy men had figured prominently in Japanese religious life since early times. Until the late 16th century, however, such arduous journeys were largely confined to unorthodox religious wayfarers known variously as Hijiri, Yugosha or Yamabushi or to members of the elite hoping thereby to gain religious merit or other benefits. In the Edo period, better roads, increasing safety and the availability of new accommodation contributed to a dramatic increase in religiously motivated travel among escleratics and lay people of all classes. While group journeys by members of religious associations were especially poor, religious itinerancy by individuals also flourished. Among the later group were monks, artists and preachers, some officially ordained and others not, who supported their travels by making paintings and statuary for devotees along their routes by prose lightizing with the aid of their own or other professionally painted pictures. For the most part, itinerant holy men lacked professional training, creating works that by urban standards appear awkward and technically naive. Yet the taste for such works was by no means limited to uneducated country folk. The expressiveness and alertness they embodied found an appreciative audience among sophisticated city dwellers. As well, some urban artists such as Jakucha in Kyoto and Kuni Yoshi in Edo even created works in which they deliberately suppressed their technical skill to achieve the apparently spontaneous, unpretentious effects of their rural counterparts. Itinerant monks generally left their carved statuary unsigned. Inku 1632 to 1695 and Moku Jiki 1718 to 1810 being rare exceptions. Modern scholars have traced Inku's itinerary by the thousands of wooden images he and probably his disciples or later emulators left at sites the length and breadth of Japan. All are rough, hewn, unpainted figures with chisel marks clearly visible. A tradition with roots in a genre of statuary created as early as 12th century by itinerant Yamabushi, who like Inku were members of the Shao Gendo order, a religious movement that combined elements of Buddhism, Taoism, Shu Gendo prescribed 
ascetic practices in the mountains in order to attain magic powers that would benefit the community. Enko's statues include deities from the traditional Japanese Buddhist canon, popular folk figures and deities from the Shinto tradition. Prince Shotoku, 17th century, Wood, Naka, Kan, Nonado, Hajima, City, This 17th century prince considered the father of Japanese Buddhism was the object of veneration throughout Japan. He was often portrayed as child with his hands joined in prayer. Some were carved under excruciatingly difficult conditions in small dark caves as part of his practice of religious austerities. Others he made at the request of devotees or in repayment for hospitality. Born to a modest farm family in the modern city of Hajima, modern Gifu prefecture, Enku became such a noted figure that his biography was later included in the Kyoto publication, Biographies of Eccentrics of Recent Times. It recounts that Inko took Buddhist vows at an early age but fled from the temple to take up the life of a recluse on Mount Fuji, later making numerous pilgrimages to sacred mountains as far as north as Hokkaido. In ascribing miraculous powers to the images he carved along his route using a chisel as his only tool. Inku's biography reflects the identification of unconventional lifestyle with artistic creativity, a belief that became widespread in the late Edo period. Moku Jiki, who was also born to a peasant family, took Buddhist woes at the comparatively late age and began sculpting only when he was in his 60s. His career as an itinerant monk sculptor was also inextricably tied up with his religious practices. The name Moku Jiki, literally one who eats wood, suggests that he followed an extremely rigorous form of Shu Gendo, asceticism involving subsistence only on wild fruits and vegetables, although it might possibly refer also to his prodigious sculptural activities. Mokujiki, like Inko before him, left a nationwide trail of carving, some created as expressions of personal piety, others in response to commissions. Mokujiki sculptural style is marked by a soothing rhythmic rounded treatment of forms and drapery that is in sharp contrast to Inku's raw angular style. Fudo Mayo, dated 1789, made up of wood and at present in Folk Crafts Museum, Tokyo. Moku Jiki carved his image relatively early in the career while stating at Hyuga Kuku Bunji, a temple in Kyushu. His rendering of this Buddhist deity is unconventional. Iconographic tradition prescribed that Fudo should hold a noose in one hand, a sword in the other, and be surrounded by a flaming halo. Monks of the Rinzai school of Zen were specially active in provincial regions and many of them used painting and calligraphy to aid their followers. For most part, these self-trained artists painted in ink monochrome, infusing their work with a spiritual conviction and an idiosyncratic touch absent in the more conventional religious paintings of their professional lay counterparts. The unpretentious subject matter, economy of means, and self-consciously 
unstudied qualities of such paintings which are now known as zenga zen pictures have much in common with hagia the mode of painting associated with haikai hakun ikaku was exceptionally inventive in his use of the visual arts to explain his teachings and in so doing was instrumental in extending the rinzai sects popular following a monk of modest background hakun was born in hara one of the post station on the tokaida road and remained in the kanto until 1718 when he went out for a brief and apparent unsatisfactory period of study in kyoto thereafter he led a peripatetic life traveling widely throughout japan and returning only periodically to his home temple shonen ji in hara although he painted traditional zen themes such as portraits of bodhi dharma the founder of the zen sect and avlokiteshvara the bodhi sattva of the compassion he also created humorous pictures caricatures and parables to serve as visual sermons for his followers typical of his work blind man crossing a bridge is a hanging scroll ink on paper and is it is in a private collection a theme of his own invention the power for which is rooted in its union of the specific and universal the setting is a narrow long bridge spanning the kano river near the shionji but the silhouetted forms of the blind travelers feeling their way across the chasm suggest the difficulty of the route to enlightenment this theme is echoed in the poem inscribed in hakuni's spidery script both in a life and the floating world outside us are like the blind man's round long bridge a mind that can cross over is the best guide this was the translation by stephen adidas although the feudal government restricted travel for pleasure or sightseeing generally it did not refuse permission to visit shrines and temples or healing hot springs consequently pilgrimage or sightseeing under the pretext of pilgrimage became so popular that the authorities in many domains issued edicts stipulating on which days for how long and how often people could travel publishers in kyoto osaka and edo catered to pilgrims by issuing maps and illustrated guidebooks highlighting the sacred poetic and historic sites throughout the country with the growth of pilgrimages the areas in the vicinity of popular shrines and temples developed flourishing commercial districts offering food lodging and entertainment as well as religious objects including devotional imagery small paintings workshops also sprang up in the towns and villages along the major routes to supply pilgrims with souvenirs in otsu a village on the shores of lake biwa that was the last station on the tokaido before kyoto families specialized in simple paintings and hand colored prints which the wayfarer could easily carry home as souvenirs and protective talismans religious subjects predominated in the earliest examples of otesu pictures but by the 18th century the repertory had expanded to include a wide range of secular subjects as well hal der bearer in the painting the unflattering portrayal of a bombastic hal beard bearing feudal retainer who led the daimyo processions reflects the unpopularity of these men before whom commoners had to prostrate themselves 
as a sign of respect. The enduring popularity and many literary references to Otsu during the Edo period suggest that urban sophisticates appreciated these inexpensive pictures as refreshing alternatives to the works available in the cities. The most popular pilgrimage destinations drew visitors from cities, towns and villages throughout the country. These included Mount Fuji, the temples, Zenkoji, modern Nagano Prefecture and Shinshoji, Chiba Prefecture and above all Isi Shrine, Mi Prefecture. Isi, a Shinto shrine devoted to Ama Teresu Omi Kami. The ancestral god of the imperial family was first opened to public worship in the 15th century when financial support from the imperial family declined. To raise funds and attract pilgrims, monks and nuns traveled about the country praising the efficacy of prayers at Isi. Using paintings depicting the shrine thronged with pilgrims as visual aids in their sermons. Isi pilgrimage mandala, this painting by anonymous painter help devotees or recall their own pilgrimage by depicting with map-like precision the location of the main buildings of the inner and outer shrines at Isi. The routes leading to them, the pilgrims engaged in different ritual purifications required at various stages along the way. Similar compositions continue to be painted throughout the Edo period. So successful were their efforts that in 1563 and 1585 the inner and outer shrines were reconstructed largely through popular contributions. In the Edo period popular pilgrimages to Isi to pray for abundant crops or personal well-being mushroomed as a result of expanding membership in religious confraternities organized by itinerant Isi priests. Members of such organizations paid annual dues so that every year a group chosen by lot could worship at Isi on their behalf. Isi pilgrimage mandals often served as objects of devotion of such groups whose membership is estimated to have included between 80 and 90 percent of the nation. Mass pilgrimages occurred periodically over the course of the Edo period, but in 1830 the popularity of Issei was such that more than 5 million people were swept up in the event. Until the Edo period, communal observances such as festivals and pilgrimages had been for the most part local and regional affairs. The Isi phenomena reinforced by the ideology of the nation's learning movement and drawing participants from throughout Japan transcended regional boundaries signaling the beginning of a unified nation cult centered on the worship of the deities associated with the imperial family. Poet and literary painters. Many painters in the tradition of Yosa Buson and E.K. Tagya were restless individuals with lives rooted in the city yet drawn for various reasons to life outside it. When they traveled, it was not usually with the particular destination in mind, but rather because the sense of dislocation and flux thus endangered was conducive to self-discovery 
and enhanced creativity. Travel also offered opportunities to satisfy the yearnings to learn more about Japan and to establish or expand a network of patrons. The ranks of peripatetic poet and literary painters swelled dramatically in the 19th century as the number of unemployed samurai skilled in arts increased and artistic competition in the city intensified. Poetic consciousness was central to patterns of travel in the Edo period and many artists of both religious and secular backgrounds followed the footsteps of literary wayfarers of earlier times. The places visited by the 10th century courtiers in exile, Ariwara and Narihira, which were described in the prose and poems of the tales of Isi, exerted a strong attraction. Fan with a scene from the tales of Isi is at present in the Freer Gallery of Art, Synthesonian Institution, Washington, D.C., is painted by Ogata Koren. Incense container with scene from the tales of Isi is a stoneware with overglaze enamels. This is also in the Freer Gallery of Art, Synthesonian Institution, Washington, D.C., is also painted by Ogata Kenzan. Both Koren and Kenzan were exceptionally skillful in adapting classical literary motifs to the requirements of various media. The decoration on both the fan painting and the incense container illustrate the same episode from the tales of Isi. A popular source of inspiration for the Rinpa artist. So too did those celebrated in the poetry of the 12th century monk poet Saigyo whose life and travels were often alluded to in kabuki drama. The most powerful stimulus by far, however, was Matsuo Basho's The Narrow Road to the Deep North, an account of his travels through northern and western Japan. Basho's poetic diary of the first six months of this journey, which began in 1689 and lasted more than two and a half years, is a rich tapestry of image and emotion, recollection and observation. Unlike his predecessors, Basho did not employ the classical waka form, but rather the newer high kai. His verses also differ in their celebrations of even the most humble and unwelcome aspects of travel, such as flias and lice. Basho's followers were on the whole less concerned with objective fidelity in recording the physical world than in using the seasons and places they visited to convey their own mental images and emotional states. The scenes illustrated evoke the following passage from Basho's poetic diary. As I was landing at a place called Senju, my heart was burdened by the thought of the many miles stretching ahead and my tears fell over such a parting on the illusory path of this world. With spring leaving, the birds cry out, regret the fish, have tears in their eyes. That poem marked the beginning of the pilgrimage, but it was difficult to set forth. There were all my friends gathered to see me off and apparently prepared to stand there till they saw the last of my back vanish down the road. This is a translation by E.R. Minid. Busan, who studied under a Basho disciple, was one of the many 
who retraced Basho's route into the north, later creating many paintings inspired by his journey. The long hand scroll format is particularly well suited to this subject since it enables viewers to reenact in their imagination the passage of time and space of the original journey. The juxtaposition of the passage from Basho's diary with the sketchy portrayal of the poet and his companion reflects the harmonious accommodation of word and image that distinguishes Haiga. Although Tagya was also inspired to visit places celebrated in Basho's poetic diary and even kept a personal diary of his own journey to the three peaks, Hakusan, Tate Yama, and Mount Fuji. His sense of place differed considerably from that of the poet painters in Busan's circle. His many views of Mount Fuji and Mount Asama, for instance, communicate the exhilaration of exploration and discovery and a keen sense of curiosity about his physical surroundings. Although the representation of scenic landmarks, Meshio, celebrated in the literature, had a long tradition in Japanese painting until Tagya's day, the multiple layers of historical and literary associations they evoked had overshadowed interest in their visible reality. Tagya's personal fusion of these two seemingly incompatible subjective and objective modes of visualizing place marked the emergence of a new and influential genre of paintings called True View Pictures, Shinkei Zhu. Like their metropolitan counterparts, many men and women living in provincial towns and villages sought self-cultivation through forms of literary and pictorial expression associated with Chinese culture. Literary artists served these yearnings by traveling about the countryside, offering instruction to merchants, farmers, and rural samurai in exchange for food, lodging, and recompense, a practice known as Bunjin Bokaya Ku, Literary Ink Guest. They made specially rapid inroads in small towns and villages in the Kansai region and along the inland sea, where the development of industry and artisanal activity had brought great prosperity and with it the leisure to enjoy cultural pursuits. Yuragami, Gayakudo, Rai Senyo, and Tano Mura Chikudin were all active in this region. All were estranged from official culture, yet no doubt beneficiaries of their former status within it. Gaya Kudo made a living chiefly by offering instruction in the quin, a stringent instrument, mastery of which was considered one of the four gentlemanly accomplishments. Sanyo relied on his skills as a scholar and poet as well as a painter and calligrapher. So did Chikudin, who was often his travel companion. Chikudin, who came from a distinguished family of hereditary physicians in northern Kyushu, resigned his position as head of the clan school in 1811 after his proposals for local administrative reforms were rejected. Thereafter, he spent much more of his time in Kansai area, where he developed his artistic skills through contacts with other literati, most notably Okada Bei Sanjin. His scholarly interests are reflected in his treatise on painting, which include assessments of the work of fellow literati as well as pointed criticism of that of rival schools. Many of Chikudin's painting incorporate visual allusions to his travels along the inland sea, both in stormy and calm weather are ubiquitous. Two works painted in the intimate album format, Scenes from a Boat Window, a record of a trip he made in 1829, and yet one more pleasure is an album leaf, ink and colors on paper, 
and in the Niraku Museum, Nara. It is a record of one made in 1831-32 are uh, unusually evocative. The tranquil idyllic scene in a leaf from the later reproduced here reveals the lyrism characteristic of Chikudin's finest work. Executed in ink using careful repeated applications of a dry brush enhanced by the application of light colors, the portrayal of a solitary figure playing the flute by moonlight embodies the aromatic ideal that he shared with his fellow literati. Like each of the 13 paintings in the album, it bears an inscription by the artist concluding with a phrase, and this is yet one more pleasure. The genesis of this album offers telling insight into the importance literary artists attributed to personal relationships. The album originally containing 10 leaves was commissioned by an Osaka doctor and collector. Before turning the album over to him, however, Chikudin showed it to Sanyo, who so admired it that he wanted it himself. Chikudin accused adding three more paintings for his friend as well as an account for the affair. His patron was offered another album. By the mid-19th century, the wanderings of Busan, Taiga and their followers had gained Hagia and Bunjinga, a wide following, especially in towns and villages in Western Japan, but also in the Kyoto. The popularity of these art forms, both of which combined verbal and visual components, served as a catalyst for the formation of countless provincial cultural quartiers comparable to those in urban centers. The diffusion of the aesthetics of Haiga and Bunijinga brought about a blurring of the cultural boundaries between city and country.